The Song of Deborah, based on Judges chapters 4 through 5. Let's go! Again, the Israelites forget all that God has done for them and turn to worship the idols of their neighbors. Soon they become so weak and afraid, they can't even protect their own fields from Canaanite raiders. <laughs> oh, that's pathetic. <laughs> so they are currently being robbed by some Canaanites. They, the robbers, they're not in a rush or anything. They're just taking their time. They're like, oh, grab this grain. Oh, they're, oh, they're girl with sheep. Oh, yeah, I see them in there. Who cares? Like, they're not afraid of them at all. Clearly, uh, they see that God is no hand is no longer on the Israelites like it used to be since they're no longer worshiping God like they're supposed to. So homeboy come running out of his house with a pitchfork, screaming, stop, stop, hey, 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 hey. That's my grain. Come, stop, please. Don't take my stuff. God, I needed that. Okay, I needed that stuff. Uh uh. It's ours now. Back up. What are you going to do about it, anyways? We ain't afraid of you. Punk. But come on, please, please. Don't do this in front of my wife and kids. We said it's ours now. Fine. Ugh. Go back in the house. Years ago, our great leader Joshua conquered the Canaanites. Now they are conquering us. What's the matter with our leaders? We'll starve if King Jabin's men keep stealing our crane. Because it ain't our fault. It's our leader's fault. Right. The Canaanites raid one field after another. Finally, the Israelite farmers have a meeting. Let's go see Deborah, the prophetess and judge. She'll save us. We have to do something to stop these Canaanites. Because they took my stash. That was supposed to last me two years. I was supposed to be chilling. And I'm getting robbed. The angry farmers take their story to Deborah, who holds court under a palm tree in Ephraim. What can we do? The Canaanites are stealing our food. Take a message to Captain Barak in the North Country. Tell him to come at once. Uh... We don't have a chance against the Canaanites. They have 900 iron chariots. They roll in deep and they strapped. And we only have a few crude weapons. I can't even find my water gun. Does she mean war? Because <laughs> I ain't ready for war, okay? I'm supposed to be in retirement. It's a joke. A few days later, Barack... This is the plan God gave me. Take 10,000 men to Mount Tabor. When King Jabin hears of this, he will order his army under Sisera to come out and destroy us. But with God's help, you will defeat them. I'll lead the army, but only if you'll go with us. God speaks through you. And if you are there, I know God will help us. Please, I beg of thee. I'm sorry that you lack the faith to lead by yourself. Very well, I will go with you. But since you need a woman to help you fight your battles, a woman will win your battle for you as well. What up? I mean, yeah. <laughs> After a quick march, the Israelites reach Mount Tabor. Deborah's prophecy comes true. The Canaanite army comes to meet them. Have faith! This is the day the Lord will deliver us. Yeah! Get on! Deborah gives the signal and Barak charges down the mountain leading his troops. Above them, lightning flashes. Do. Hey, what? That? In the sky! Ah! A cloud burst turns the plane into a sea of mud. The iron chariots of the Canaanites sink into the mire, trapped. They are at the mercy of the Israelites who attack with speed and courage. Yes! Yes! Uh, off with the head! Ah! Can't get up! Ah! I thought y'all was weak! I thought we had them all! To the river! The Canaanites try to retreat. But the Kishon River is already overflowing its banks. And the Canaanites who try to swim to safety sink under the weight of their heavy armor. Uh, 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 
Cicero tries to escape. On the way, on the way, he stops to rest in a tent that he thinks is friendly. But the woman who lives there, JL, is loyal to Israel and kills Cicero while he is asleep. <laughs> Taught him a lesson. When Deborah learns that the Canaanites have been defeated, she sings a song of victory. In the heavens, even the stars fight for the Lord. May all the Lord's enemies die, die. And may those who love the Lord be like the sun shining bright. Bright, bright, bright. The people rejoice and sing praises too. And for 40 years, there is peace in Israel. Families work in their fields and harvest their crops. But in time, they again forget God and find themselves in more trouble than ever before. Cowardly Judge, based on Judges chapter 6 through 7. In years of plenty that followed Deborah's victory over the Canaanites, the Israelites again forget God. One by one, they join their neighbors in worshiping the idol Baal. At last, only a few people in all of Israel remember that it was God who had rescued them from their enemies. <sighs> Every harvest season, just when the Israelites are ready to gather their food for the year, roving bands of Midianites steal their harvest. For years, the desert tribesmen terrorized the Israelite villages and raid their fields. <laughs> oh, look at them. Dumb. Come on, come on. Let's, they do the work and we steal it. Get back here! Ah, run for your lives! Ah. Oh no, I just no! If they find where I hide my grain, we'll starve. What? Where you hide your grain? Show me now! No! Nah. Run it! Run it! Give me your stuff with your weak self. Ain't nobody scared of you. Get back here! Ah. But when the raid is over, it's gone. All our grain is gone. Bang! <laughs> for seven years, for seven long years, Israelites suffer at the hands of the desert tribesmen. They hide out in caves and thresh their grain in secret places. But the raiders always return. Then even more frightening news comes. The Midianites are coming again, and they're bringing great armies from the east. The east coast is coming for us. Run! Dun, dun, dun. These Israelites really need to get themselves together. Okay, let's find out how that happens. Until next time. <laughs>